When most of us think about creating a new quilt, we imagine a process of exactness, precise cutting and sewing that leads to symmetry. Today's guest is a self-described hippie quilter, a young hippie quilter. Her free motion designs are totally modern, yet she uses tried and true quilting techniques. I'd like you to welcome Tula Pink to Sewing with Nancy. Thanks for being with us, Tula. Well, thanks for having me. Nancy, I'm obsessed with pattern. Everywhere I look, I see the potential for a quilt design. For example, fields of soybeans and corn that I now see from my backyard inspired my quilt beanstalks. Growing up in Los Angeles, the scenery was totally foreign to me, resulting in a unique interpretation and a modern quilt design. Quilts from the House of Tula Pink, that's what's next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, celebrating 30 years of sewing and quilting with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effects threads because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. One of the greatest parts about quilting will be choosing fabrics. And Tula, you design fabrics, so you have a whole array of choices to put into your quilts. I do. I have a lot of bright choices. And when we look at the stalks, give, we said your inspiration was from fields. My surroundings, mm -hmm. bean stalks, corn fields. I live sure. in the Midwest, so sure. I have a lot of that. And the, the, within each stalk, you have lots of colors. Yes. We start with the main color of the stock, the stem, which is the green, and then we carry that into each, what I like to call blossom, of mm -hmm. the stock. And then each wedge here will contain five fabrics, beginning with a green, ending with a white background fabric, and then three varying fabrics in between that create the color of the stock. And there are 10 fabrics prints used within this quilt plus the solids. And you can see she has different configurations within each blossom unit. And we're going to talk about those. Yeah. So you're going to choose those five fabrics and cut them all the same. Yes, they'll all be cut exactly the same. And then when we start to make our blossoms and rearrange mm -hmm. them is when the organic quality starts to come in. So we're going to start by cutting a one and a half inch, a two and a half inch strip, a three and a half inch strip. <laughs> I think they get the idea. Yeah, <laughs> and it just goes right on through to five and a half inch so strips. One and a half, two, three, four, and five, five. and a half, all right. in the half inches. And then you're gonna have five fabrics cut in that, configure, cut in those configurations mm -hmm. and stacked. And then you're going to use one strip, one size, from each color Correct. to make a strip set. A, and each strip set will contain one of each size. Mm -hmm. You said that much better than I did. <laughs> so I'm going to hand you some of the strips. This looks like a two and a half to me. Mm -hmm. And then this fun little print, here you go. It's a three and a half. And here, four and a half. Then a one inch. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be in this order. I just am handing you so that you have one of each size. Right. And each strip set, just like this, is going to contain one of each size, beginning with a green, ending with a background. And these in the middle can switch around mm -hmm. any way we want. Now you're going to sew these five fabrics together. The fabric is 40, 42 inches mm -hmm. wide. So you'll have a, a lengthy strip set. And here we have some options. And if you want to put those to the side, Tula, I'll lay out two of the options that you've created. And notice the same width, but a one inch to a five and a half really gives mm -hmm. a different look. It really makes each blossom have its own personality. Now the personality also comes with the cutting of the wedges. And on Sewing with Nancy in the past, we've cut wedges and used rulers and been mm -hmm. precise. Yep. And we kind of throw all that out the window. Yeah. 
And this will either drive you crazy or make you really happy. <laughs> so um, we start with our strip set by just, we in, as opposed to standard quilting where you want to straighten that mm -hmm. edge out, what we want to do is create an angled edge. And then from here, you want to start making your wedges by creating opposing angles. And I'm not measuring anything I here. See, yes, that, uh, I couldn't believe that when I first thought <laughs> that. I want to measure this. <laughs> because what we're going to do is eventually yeah. trim them down. So all we're creating here are our wedges. And so what's happened by creating opposing trapezoid shapes, when we put all the wide ends together, mm -hmm. you'll see that this piece is on sure. the outside here and on the inside here. And you'll find out that you're going to be cutting several strip sets, doing some mix and match, mm -hmm. and then do the same of the white, the solid or the cream color Correct. background. Just cut wedges and be very cavalier about it. Yeah, and the more cavalier you are about it, the better <laughs> it really it turns out. When I designed this quilt, I made two versions, one where I was really rigid and one where I was... Uh huh very free, f free form with the whole thing, and they turned out exactly the same, so. <laughs> Hence, be free form, very organic. Yes. Then you're going to put them together. Yeah, and by, and you're always putting a short end to a wide end. And what I like to do is actually place all the ones that have the green at the wide end because this is where our stem is going to go. And these are identical, so let's, uh, what do you say? We have some other ones yeah, here. Yeah, let's, let's mix it up a little bit. And you, you mentioned you like to have at least one inch width at yeah, the bottom. Yeah, I like to mm -hmm. have at least one inch width at the bottom. And I like to keep it under four inches at the wide end. And every sure. once in a while, one will expand outside that measurement. Uh-huh. Here we go. So you can start to see how this is creating by having this really strong red piece here. It's mm -hmm. and having it move around, yeah. it's creating a different look on each one. Now, when sewing this together, you, if you can see how this is starting to build, it, it is almost straight. Mm -hmm. it, 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 you, it really evens itself out as you go. Surprisingly. Now, one you showed me yesterday that sometimes you d just did. Well, I guess that's the wrong color, but well, if we if we accidentally sew a wide end to a wide end, uh -huh. um, you can see right there it's already starting yep. to turn. Mm -hmm. So how we combat that is by sewing a narrow end to a narrow end here, and then it and it's starting to even itself back out <laughs> again, but creating a really interesting, nice curve, mm -hmm. which is going to show up in the sample quote quite a bit. Sure. So then you're going to sew these wedges together, and Tula recommends sewing one by one, not in pairs. And here you can see I'm just meeting these edges together, sewing traditional fourth of an inch seam allowance, and just keep stitching yeah. and stitching. And more often than not, I won't even pin them because I am uh -huh. going to be trimming those side edges down. So, Speaking of the side edges, here you go. <laughs> this is a mini one. And so I, I like to start with wherever the narrower end is to even up because I don't want to, I don't have much green here to connect with the stem. Sure. So I want to start there. And again, I'm not really measuring, I'm not sure. lining anything up. I'm just creating a nice even edge that I can measure off of to get the width of my column. And so I'll line it up here. 14 inches mm -hmm. is the width of our column. And now when I go to Presto. sew, my columns together, they'll be perfectly sewn together. So the column, two columns are mm -hmm. connected with the stem. With the stem, and you can see then there are two separate beanstalks that we have here. Great fabrics, fun configuration, organic, but yes. with a purpose. Absolutely. Tula's Hound's Tooth Quilt Design takes what is a traditional design woven into fabric and supersizes it into a pieced quilt top. Ideal for a masculine or urban chic decor, create it with just two high contrast fabrics or gradate the fabric colors for subtle drama. This fabric in this quilt is dynamite, but you can make it simple. Yes. Which we're going to do just with two fabrics, and we'll show you later how Tulu combines six or more fabrics mm -hmm. together. But it's the hound's tooth that's the showcase. Yeah, and, and this is one where the pattern is, is the real pop. That's the power of the quilt. And the fabrics just need to be high contrast. They can really be anything. So what more can you have in high contrast than black and white? <laughs> 
So this, the strips to create, we're going to create strip sets for this piece here. And mm -hmm. what we're doing is cutting a two and a half strip out of our light and our dark, as well as a three and a half strip out of our light and our dark. And you want the three and a half strips on the outside and your two and a half strips on the inside, alternating light to dark to light to dark. And like a normal strip set, you'd sew the, the pieces together and we have that already done. Yay. Our life is in samples. And Tula, let's just look to the back of this because, you know, it's important to talk about pressing. Yeah, and with when I'm using extreme lights and extreme darks like I am here, mm -hmm. I really like to press the seams open because I don't want any of that black showing up on the white side as well as when I'm cutting sure. into six and a half inch squares, I'm gonna get a nicer, more even cut mm -hmm. if I'm not going over bulky seams. Yeah, so in long seams, it's easy to do that pressing. Absolutely. Now there's one size of block that you're going to need for the strip set as well as for the squares. And yes. It's a simple. It's one size block for the entire quilt. And I like to use a six and a half inch mm -hmm ruler because then I don't have to guess at the angles. I can line up my top corner and my bottom corner right on my center seam. I know it's in the middle and just cut along that edge. Now you're not going to, we're at a really un awkward angle yeah, for cutting. So I'm not going to cut all the way around because I don't want to promote the bad rotary habits. So <laughs> well, we gonna, I might that. do that at home in private, but I won't do it here <laughs> in, in public. So after you've cut the strip set into six and a half inch squares on point, you're going to cut six and a half inch squares of the same fabrics, but you don't have to do it on point. Right, right. These are just going to be straight, even uh -huh. cuts. And then we're going to do a layout. And this is where the magic happens. And so I love that you can create something so powerful and graphic with just three simple blocks, mm -hmm. three simple piece sizes. And the only rule to laying this out is that each row is either light right. squares or dark squares. Okay, I'll do the, the solids, how's that? Okay, sounds good. And in every row that has a light square, you're gonna put your light corner of your triangle in the upper corner. And it doesn't necessarily make that much of a difference which corner it's mm -hmm. in, as long as it's consistent the whole way through. Yeah, sure. So now that we have a, a row of dark squares, I'm gonna switch and put my dark corner in the upper right hand corner, or upper left hand corner. And we're alternating, obviously, like tiles on the floor, the, yep. the blocks. It's just a big checkerboard. And now you can kind of see what's happening. The third row is the, the charm. The third row is where the magic happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so now you're starting to see. Yes. Here's your first big hound's tooth. It takes three rows to actually complete the shape. Magic. And then from here on out, you'll just keep seeing it all the way mm -hmm. down. So you could just imagine a quilt just totally of these two fabrics. As I said, urban chic, it really yeah. has that look. But well, you can also add more. Yeah, and it's great for a man's quilt too, because yeah. mm -hmm. I know we all struggle with what to do <laughs> yes. in that situation. And this is a great one because it's graphic, it's bold. And here's some more bold colors where you can see at the far corner we have the high contrast and then you incorporated another color. Yes. And I put the, you can see I have two, my darks, this one is a little bit darker mm -hmm. than this piece, so I paired this piece with my lightest light. Sure. And then let's just raise this so everyone can see how you, on a, almost on an angle, not almost, on an angle, mm -hmm. you, you integrated the colors. Yes. And, we'll and, just... I, and I go from a really, really light pale green all the way to, mm -hmm. through this chartreuse color, all the way to a really green green with a slightly blue dot in it. It's charming how the colors work together, but yet you could make it very simplistic by mm -hmm. high contrast fabrics and enjoy the process as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a simple, not too high thinking quilt. We like that. <laughs> Have you ever fallen asleep in one direction and woken up in another? Disorienting, isn't it? Underneath this quilt, you will always know which way is up. It's a unique technique that Tool and I would like to share with you. As we look at this full-size quilt, it's impressive. It, it's big. <laughs> it's a big statement. And the 
big appliques are, they're kind of appliques, raw yeah. edge appliques are obviously the arrows that we're stating the obvious, but I right. just want to hold up the other opposite end. You have a warm side and a cool side. Right. And you use scraps. Yes, all this was all scraps from quilts that I've made over, I don't know how many years. So it was a great use, a way to use them up. Tula is a prolific quilt maker, <laughs> and you'd think for someone her age wouldn't be as prolific, but you make how many quilts a year? About 45 to 55. <laughs> Th that's a lot of big quilts, and so <laughs> you have a fair number of scraps. Yes. And since you designed fabric, you can combine your scraps mm -hmm. and your, your love of fabric into this whichever way is up quilt. Yes. So. Um, when I'm making the pieces for the actual applique portion, I like to cut these with a pinked edge rotary mm -hmm. cutter um, just because it'll reduce the amount of stringing that happens sure. later on um, through washings. And, and again, this is something that I'm not going to measure a whole like lot it. of. Uh -huh. um, I'm just going to create pieces that I can use. And sometimes I'll focus in on a color, like you can see half of this is more purple, half is more pink. So maybe I'll cut it in half mm -hmm. so that I can use this piece over here and this piece over here. Sure. Um, until I have enough pieces that I feel like I can really cover an area. The area that we're gonna cover is going to have a paperback fusible web or a webbing applied to the fabric and you're gonna use paperback fusible web. Mm -hmm. And we're not doing an arrow today. Right. We're doing a heart because it's much more manageable on this table. <laughs> yes. Um, so whenever you're choosing a shape, this can be applied to all kinds of shapes. But when you're choosing a shape, you really want to choose a shape that's really recognizable, mm -hmm. that's very simple. Because the more edges you have that are, the more complicated the edges, the harder it's going to be to see when we cover it in a bunch of scraps. Sure, sure. So simple shapes work best. So on the paper side, you draw your shape. We wanted this symmetrical, so you, obviously the way you do a mm -hmm. heart, and then the fusible side is the other side. And we've done this, oh, 129 times on yeah. Sewing with Nancy, I think. TV so magic. Yes, yeah, so we're going to fuse it to the right side of the fabric, which we've already done. You just follow the instructions how long to press in one spot, and then just peel off the paper. And you can kind of see the glistening portion of it. And that will become our outline for the, that'll become our edge that we follow mm -hmm. is that shiny side. It's, it's a little difficult to see in this situation, sure. but when your eyes are right on it, you can see it pretty well. And so we start by just really following that edge with our scraps. Yeah, I'll fill in there with you. Yeah, and you just want to make sure that every portion is covered and it doesn't matter where they are. And some of these pieces were overlap and where you have two fabrics overlapping each other, you are going, you're not going to have any fusible there. So that's why mm -hmm. we need to also stitch it down. So, okay, we'll just do them. And I like to go in pieces like this and then press as I go. So you can save that paper covering mm -hmm. so that if your iron would go to the wrong area, you can just simply do that. And I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. So then after you've covered your whole area, here you can see a close-up at the machine where I'm stitching around the edges just to, to tack it down. Right. And here's the example for a pillow top that Tula has done. And Tula, as an ending, let's just look at the raw edges. Then there was more stitching. Yeah, there is more stitching in the quilting. The quilting is really what holds it down. Uh -huh. And I like a heavy stitching on my quilts. So you have a, a wood grain and this arrow and then a s right. swirl and here. Since this quilt is so definitively divided in two halves, we did one stippling here, one here, and then alternated the stippling on that side. Very charming and a great way to use up scraps. Absolutely. During today's Nancy's Corner segment, you'll again realize that the world is very small, but it's oh so connected. I'd like to introduce you to Ken Wing. Ken works with a women's cooperative in India where scraps of silk are turned into fiber yarns, yarns that we can use for embellishment. Welcome to Sewing with Nancy, Ken. Thanks for having me, Nancy. 
I was intrigued when I first saw your beautiful fiber yarns, but then more intrigued when I learned the story behind it. Right, it's, it's an interesting story. It all starts here. It does. Um, it starts with silk sari remnants and selvage from the factory floors of India um, that are donated to a women's co-op. Um, and, they, and they turn them into beautiful hanks of fiber. What, yes, exactly. What they do is they sew them together end to end, all the waste and selvage, and they're making a beautiful silk yarn out of silk waste. And you have this great photo of, of a gal sewing these together and, and just making nothing into something. Exactly, something useful and beautiful yes. out of nothing. And giving the, the women some income, a purpose. And a sense of self-reliance. Sure. And, and uh, basically they're subsistence farmers. Um, it's a, a cluster of villages and the uh -huh. women work only during the harvest, which is about two months a year. So we thought it would be nice to give them something to do oh. all year round. And then we get to have the benefits of the scraps that we normally thrown away into great embellishment. We'll, right, we'll show right. you the embellishment ideas and, as you can kind of get the idea in just a few minutes, but then there's more than just the fabrics. The selvage is left over, there's fiber as another option. There is fiber. Left over <laughs> as well. Oh, wow, pretty. But that would that would be a little hard to work with for most of us. It would be in in this state. But what what the ladies do in this case is they separate it into color stories and hand spin it into into uh, soft silk yarn. Oh, and it is. In, I love the texture. A lot of texture, oh. a lot of color. And it's a drop spindle, a drop spinning. It's a drop spindle. And right, here's an image of that done. They can do it practically anywhere. Exactly. Just sit, sit and, and create the beautiful yarns. When right. I first saw your baskets of fibers, I just stopped and admired them because they're so pretty to look at. Well, thank you. And the, the options of working with them are quite fun. They are. This is a, this is a great looking scarf. This is done with um, any water-soluble stabilizer. Uh -huh. It's very colorful. It's got a lot of movement. Um, so they put the, put the fibers on the water-soluble stabilizers, twist them around. Right, and because they're, they're, yeah. they're continuous strands sure. of silk, you kind of just swirl around and then zigzag sew it into the paper and rinse the paper away. Oh. Charming. That's what you have left. Just a, a great shawl, really a, a wonderful accent piece. Right, right. And then here's this one is woven. This is, um, yeah, it's woven. Kind of, it's done yeah. in the, uh, with the same material, the water soluble stabilizer. The strips are pressed out and woven. Mm hmm. And the color, my oh, goodness. Yeah. There's the, no color like silk. <laughs> no, there certainly yeah. isn't. And just, you can, I can feel kind of where they're coming together, where the seams are met. It, it, and then the back, you can see more readily perhaps where the stitching is done, random stitching on the water soluble stabilizer. And then couching is a great option. Couching is also a great op option. So just, this is with the spun yarns. Right, the spun silk sari yarn, the recycled silk sari yarn, and it's just couched down into this uh, pillow. Mm -hmm. So you can zigzag over it with matching thread colors, or you can right. use clear threads. It, it has many, many options. So what time of year's, year are these yarns made? Is there a certain time? Or well, you they're, mentioned... they're made all year. They're, okay. We make them all, all right. year round. And um, they're... It requires about 250 women, so we, oh, we help yeah. about 250 women with this project. You know, it always amazes me, the community of sewing and quilting. It, 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 as I mentioned, it makes the world small and connected. I, I love to connect the dots on sewing with Nancy to mm -hmm. see where things I've used are made from recycled materials that help someone perhaps have great self-esteem or improve their self-esteem right. and here's a, a small little other options that can be made. A little clutch handbag. Well your, uh, your art program where you have worked together and then you can find, we can find out more about your yarns 
your, your company that you work with is? Is Leilani Arts. And we'll be featuring those on our website. If you go to our Sewing with Nancy website, which is nancyzeman.com, you'll find all things Sewing with Nancy on that site. And under Nancy's Corner, click under Ken Wing, and you'll find a direct link to that area. Ken, Ken thank you so much for being our guest on well, Sewing with you, Nancy. thank you, Nancy. I appreciate it. And also, thank you for joining us. Next time, we'll be back for our second program of our program, Quilts from the House of Tula Pink. Bye for now. Tula Pink has written a fully illustrated book entitled Quilts from the House of Tula Pink that serves as the reference for this two-part series. It's $16.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2610. Order item number W1582. Quilts from the House of Tula Pink. Credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, celebrating 30 years of sewing and quilting with Nancy Zeman, has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles, Closed Captioning Funding, provided by Olissa. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.